Hi, welcome to this short video that helps you understand how much more effort DO254 compliance really requires. My name is Michelle Lang, and this video is based on a white paper I wrote called Estimating the Effort and Cost of a DO254 Program. Even though DO254 has been around for a while, some companies are still facing their very first programs, and when this happens, the first question they usually ask is, how much effort is this going to be, or how much is this going to cost me? Well, those are great questions uh, with, unfortunately, not very solid answers. I can tell you from my interaction with customers, though, sometimes the answer is a little bit scary. DO254 programs, especially FIRST programs, can be quite expensive. So what drives up the cost? That's what we're going to be exploring in this video, because understanding these factors is really the first step in costing a DO254 program, and then, of course, in reducing the cost of compliance. The first factor, and this is really key, is team experience. DO254 has a pretty sharp learning curve. I explained this a little bit in the DO254 Basics video series I presented. Um, DO254 compliance isn't all that straightforward. You can read all you want, you can take training, but the learning really occurs through experience. And that experience, especially in the first programs, can be a little bit painful. So there's really no substitute for experience. Highly experienced teams can be several times more productive than inexperienced teams. And of course, that's great news for those companies with experienced teams, but what if you're just starting out? Well, in that case, my advice is to seek out this experience. If you don't have it, find it. It'll be well worth it to you. Another key factor is the DAL, or design assurance level of a program. DAL A and B programs are virtually identical in terms of effort, and they are by far the highest effort. They require following DO254 with the highest levels of control, independence, advanced verification, tool assessment, and so on. Uh, then there's a fairly big gap down to DAL-C and DAL-D programs where you still have to follow the basics of DO254 but have lesser requirements. And of course, DAL-E programs don't require DO254 compliance at all. While there's certainly a baseline of effort required for just about any program to do things like you know, the planning, uh, putting the development uh, environment or structure in place to participate in audits and so on, the level of design complexity is also a key factor in estimating DO254 effort. Obviously, more complex programs or complex designs will require more effort. Now, how do you measure this? If a design is a new project, complexity can be measured by the number of requirements allocated to the hardware item. If the project is an existing design that has to be re-engineered, uh, or if much of the design is already complete when the DO254 process begins, which is not really encouraged, but it certainly does happen a lot, then complexity can be measured by the lines of code. As companies gain experience, they can then make effort calculations based on these complexity metrics. For example, the company that I work for, Logic Circuit, has worked on numerous programs, and from this data can pretty accurately scope the effort based on complexity, along with other pertinent factors that I am introducing here. A company's quality mindset is also a key factor. Uh, it can totally have a bearing on how easy it is for uh, you know, a company to adopt DO254 compliance processes. So companies new to DO254 have a much easier time uh, and a much less steep learning curve, so to speak, if they already are employing some sort of structured quality management system, such as CMMI, ISO 9001, or probably most applicable is AS9100. And that's the ISO 9001 quality system tuned for the aerospace industry. That's the one that our company follows. Another obvious factor is whether the design is new or if it already exists. Of course, existing designs will require less work. However, as I mentioned earlier, there's a certain amount of unavoidable overhead that exists even for existing work. So existing designs will surely require some modification to be compliant with DO254, and this should be understood and anticipated. Also, keep in mind that showing product service experience for previously developed hardware might be an option. And I emphasize might here because sometimes this can be difficult to demonstrate or to meet the level of experience required. But if you can, um, this is a potential way to sidestep much of the DO254 requirements. Now, many of the companies who are new to DO254 compliance right now 
are serving military applications. More and more military contracts are making DO-254 a requirement, especially in the area of unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. So sorry, military folks, a uh, steep learning curve is ahead of you. The good news, though, is that the DAL is often reduced in military programs and the auditing process is often much less strict. Now, that means that following the essence of DO-254 is oftentimes sufficient which can be far less expensive than following a full DAL A or B process that's you know, fully audited by you know, the commercial certification authorities. And speaking of certification authorities, sometimes they don't always agree on what's acceptable. They're supposed to, but that's in the ideal world. So if you're just undergoing certification with one agency, that's not too bad. But in some cases, multiple agencies might be involved, and this can certainly add to the potential for additional scrutiny and potential rework in some cases. Of course, your engineering team is also a cost factor. More experienced engineers will surely cost you more, but experience is so crucial in this domain that oftentimes more costly engineers can actually save a program money. So think twice about trying to find the least costly engineers to deal with your DO-254 compliance issues and instead invest in experience and ramp up those who are less experienced alongside those who are, and it will certainly pay off. An often forgotten factor is in the tool sets. As in any industry, having the right tools for the job is important, and you might need some new tools for your DO-254 program. For example, if today you don't already have an HDL code checker or a traceability tool or a simulator that offers code coverage or a suite of configuration management tools, you'll likely need to invest. So the cost of the tools, the training, and the ramp up are all additional cost and effort considerations. Also, if you have a DAL A, B, or potentially C program, don't forget about the tool assessment and possible qualification work. If you have to qualify any of your tools, this could take additional time and effort, which could be especially painful the first time around for first programs. A final cost and effort factor involves the use of intellectual property, or IP. IP use is really beginning to permeate aerospace designs. It's a relatively new phenomenon, and the certification authorities and the policy are still kind of evolving and struggling a bit on how to deal with it. But one thing is pretty clear from the latest policy documents, and that is just because the IP is available doesn't mean it's acceptable for use in DO-254 programs. So IP is sub subject to airworthiness requirements and may be subject to full design assurance compliance. Now there's options for this. Of course, the best option being to use DO-254 compliant IP, and the worst option being having no strategy whatsoever. <laughs> Now, if you find yourself in the latter category, you could be in for a nasty and expensive surprise during program audits. Okay, so now you know what all the factors are that contribute to cost and effort in a DO-254 program. This is really the first step in being able to predict the cost of your program and to begin to take steps to reduce that cost. If you have access to others in the industry or other groups in your company that are experienced in DO-254 programs, you know, seek them out, talk to them, you know, ask them about these factors and, and how they use them to cost their own programs. And then take this data to explore ways that you can reduce the cost and effort of your program based on these learnings. I hope you found this video useful in helping you create a picture of your project's cost. Again, I can't stress enough to seek out data from experienced DO254 teams who can help you. And if you need help and want to get some experience on your project team, you uh, might want to check out Logic Circuit. That's the company I work for. And I wrote this paper based on the factors that we use when pricing our own DO254 consulting services. If you have any questions, please email me at michelle underscore lang at logicircuit.com. Thank you.